In this video, we're going to be talking more about rules of inference and valid arguments. We're going to be looking at some statements involving this variable n, and we're going to be given some pre premises and some conclusions, and we're going to be deter determining uh, making valid conclusions or not. So let's get started with part A. So if you notice, we've got things kind of split up into some premises that are given and then a final conclusion. So it's clear with this first statement, if n is a real number such that n is greater than 1, then n squared is greater than 1. That's a premise. So let's just kind of keep track of these things here. Premises. So if, um, let's see, for all n and the real numbers. Um, if n is greater than 1, then n squared is greater than 1. Okay. Also, so that's a premise, also we're given that n squared is greater than 1. So that's premise. And then we have a conclusion n, so conclusion, because it's saying then, right? then n is greater than 1. But when I look at this, I want to see if it looks like any of these rules of inference that I can use. I see an implication, so that makes me look at um, these first three rules of inference. And I see a single uh, statement here. So that one makes me think of this or this, right? So I want to focus in on those two rules of inference to see if I can apply them here. If we know P is true and we know that P implies Q is true, we can conclude Q. So let's kind of identify our P's and Q's here, our hypothesis and our conclusion to see if we're able to make this conclusion. So let's use this as P and Q. Um, and so it looks like I'm given that Q is true and so I'm trying to conclude P. So that definitely doesn't match up with this one, and it definitely doesn't match up with this guy either, because I don't know the negation of Q, I just know Q. And so this is, is not a valid conclusion. And what, we're, what argument they're trying to use is that, let's see, the implication that would have to be true, P implies Q and Q, this implies P. This would have to be a tautology, okay? And I know it's not a tautology, let's just take a moment. If an implication is is false, the only situation where an implication is false is if I have a hypothesis that is true and conclusion that is false. So I want to find a situation where P is false, but the hypothesis there is true. So let's see what happens if we give P a truth value of false. So then this will be false, and P will be false. So we're looking for a case when um, I'm trying to figure out what the truth value for Q would be. Um, so I know this doesn't matter, this is going to be true, but if Q is true, if Q is true, then I'll have a true hypothesis, but a false conclusion. So just verify, okay, verify that if you plug in P equals, uh, P as true and Q as, so if P is false and Q is true, hopefully you can see that if you plug those truth values into this, uh, implication, you'll get a value of false, which means it's not a tautology. If it's a tautology, then we need to plug in any truth value combination and get true. So this tells me that the argument P implies Q, Q, therefore P, this is a, a fallacy, it's false. It's not a, not a valid argument. So that's why, given these two premises, I cannot conclude n greater than 1. So let's try another one. Let's try b. Part b, 
we've got, again, a real number n. And we know n is greater than 3. And that would imply n squared is greater than 9. And we're given another premise that n squared is less than 9. OK, so let's just write this out symbolically so we can kind of understand. It's really similar to a. Um, but our uh, second premise is a bit different. So, so I'm going to write this in our kind of argument form here with each of our uh, statements. So for all real numbers n, if n is greater than 3, then n squared is greater than 9. And that's a true statement, right? Square both sides um, and it'll be true. And then our other premise is n squared is less than or equal to 9. And our conclusion is n is great, less than or equal to 3. Now, let's go back and look at those rules of inference. They look, uh, this looks pretty similar to the one that we just did. However, instead of just having the hypothesis or the conclusion, we have the negation of the conclusion. So that might be a better thing to, to have to deal with. So let's see what happens here. Um, so hopefully you can see that the negation of, let's see, let's think about the, uh, it is not the case. that n squared is greater than 9. So if n squared is not strictly greater than 9, then maybe it's equal to 9. Or it might be less than 9. So the negation of this statement, so the negation of greater than is less than or equal to. So I can see that this n squared less than or equal to 9 is the negation of the conclusion. So actually we have this um, rule of inference here. So if I've got the negation of the conclusion, and I hypothesis in, implies a conclusion, I can conclude the negation of the hypothesis, which is happening here, right? Because the negation of n greater than 3, the opposite of that would be n less than or equal to 3. So this is a valid um, conclusion by the given rule of inference. By rule of inference, not q, p implies q, therefore not p. Okay. All right, let's look at one more. Okay, so now again we're dealing with a real number n. We've, we're given some implication to work with and we're given one more premise and we're seeing if um, we can make the given conclusion. So this is saying uh, for all real numbers n, if n is greater than 2, then n squared is greater than 4. And then we're given one more premise that n is less than or equal to 2. Therefore, so we want to know is this a valid conclusion? This one, it looks like I've got p implies q here, so some implication. And then I've got the negation of p, and I'm trying to conclude the negation of the conclusion. Okay, and if you look at your list of, of rules of inference, you'll see that this one's not there, okay? And you want to be careful not to jump to the conclusion that it's not valid, um, because some of the times those rules of inference will come in different forms. So make sure that you're really convinced that it's not valid. And so the way that we can do that is by showing that if I take the premises, join them by AND and have them imply the conclusion. This should be P, right? If this is not logically equivalent to true, then I've, I've shown that it's not a valid argument. Okay, So just like we did in that last one, we just need to find a truth value for P and Q. Um, that shows that this implication is not a tautology. So once we've done that, then um, we've shown that this argument is not valid. So we're trying to show it's not valid. And, you know, even if you just take these statements 
and not think about the logical pieces. Um, if I take a value uh, less than 2, if I take anything to be negative, so if I take like negative 3, n squared is 9, right? So that definitely doesn't satisfy this conclusion. So this is kind of giving me some information, making me think, oh, I don't think this is valid. Um, but, but let's just, you know, take it the whole way and show that this argument form is invalid. An implication if we're trying to prove it's false we need to find a condition or a situation with the truth values where the hypothesis is true but the conclusion is false so if not Q is false that tells me that Q is true so I'm going to rewrite this argument value of true for Q so I'm gonna have uh, P implies true and not P. Okay, I want to figure out when is this true. So P implies true. That's always going to be true because um, no matter what the truth value of P is. But notice I've got an and. So for an and to be true, I need both components to be true. So I need for sure not P to be true. So that gives me a truth value of false for P. I found out that if P is false and Q is true, if I plug those truth values into this implication, I'll get a false truth value out. And so that shows it's not a tautology and this um, argument form is not valid. Okay, and this is also a counterexample of of this statement here to show it's not valid. So I know it's true that if, if n is greater than 2 then n squared is greater than 4. And then I say okay what if n is less than or equal to 2? Well n equal negative 3 works out. And then n squared though, n squared is 9. That's not less than or equal to 4. Um, so I know this doesn't make sense. So you could use this counterexample here and identify the truth values of each of these pieces, right? So because this one's true, this one's true, but then this one would be false. So I have true premises but a false conclusion, so I know that I'm not making a valid conclusion. Or um, you could reference this invalid argument form, show that the corresponding implication is, is not a tautology, so it's not a valid argument form. So hopefully that helps you understand these valid and invalid argument forms a little bit more. I'm going to do one more example to try to prove, I think I'll go ahead and prove an argument form is valid and also prove an argument form is invalid. So hopefully that helps clarify. Let me know if you have questions or if any of this didn't make sense and I will talk to you soon.